All right. No other answers? It's so interesting. I did this with my first block, and we had like five different answers. So this is what makes this, the, it's going to be great. All right, so these are two potential answers. What I want you to do now is I want you to talk to your table, and you're going to talk about how you would get 19 and how you would get 27. Alright, go. I want to hear from the same Okay, this is y después te da 9 por 3 pero en orden de las operaciones que aprendió más antes en el quinto grado decía que hacer las multiplicaciones primero y después los después la adición y la uh, respuesta correcta que yo pienso que es, es be, be, uh, be, no 29 uh, 19 bueno. 19 tiene que ser la respuesta All right, bring it back. I'm curious to hear responses so how would I get 27 what would have to happen in order for me to get 27 let's see uh, go ahead Ana Cristina how do I get 27? Porque 4 más 5 mm -hmm. is igual a 9 y 9 por 3 is igual a 27. Is this what you're saying? No. How many of you also think this is how they did it? Now, Luca, I heard you say something uh, in respect to this. You said you got 19, correct, Luca? But you said if something were true about this problem, then it should be 27. What did you say? Um... Um, the parentheses around the 5 plus 4, it would be 27 because parentheses mean that you do that first, so it would be 9 times 3. Okay, very nice. All right. Um, who wants to share how we would get 19 in this case? Miguel? Okay, 3 plus 5 is equal to 15 and... 15 más 4 es igual a 19. Do you want to come up and show it? That way, even though we can't understand, some of us can't understand fully what he's saying in Spanish, we can at least see it. Show it to the class. Okay, can you try it in English? First die. First die. Uh huh. Fifteen. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Oh, good. I see some green. Go ahead and watch. Not only did it in Spanish, but he then did it in English, right? Very nice. Thank you so much, Miguel. You want to add something to that, too? Um, I think it's going to say kind of looks like 5 plus 4 is 5. 5 plus 4 is 4. Oh, I think he was doing the plus 4. Oh. Yeah. It does kind of look like that. You're right. So then wait. If we have two of these answers, 27 and 19, how do I know which one is the correct one? How do I know which one is the correct one? Go ahead and talk to your table. So I want to hear you. Come over there. I'm going to the calculator to check it. Two. Two. Um, I know because whatever comes first, it's in simple parentheses, nothing comes first. So I know that the way that it's written is the way that it's written. Because if there are parentheses, like, if there are parentheses around five plus four, you have to add that first and then multiply. There is no parentheses around three times five. You have to do three times five. You have to do three times five. So 
All right, bring it back. Did someone help me out? Someone tell me, how do I know which one is correct? Both of those seem logical, right? Nothing, 5 plus 4 is 9, and 9 times 3 is 27. And in this case, 3 times 5 is 15, and I add 4, and it equals 19. So both of them seem logical. So how do I know which one is right? Mariana. Because it's Hold on, everyone has to be tracking. Because you have to do it when it's written, like... Three times five. You have to read it like, like a like words, and like you have to. So how do you read words? You're onto something. You have to read it to left to right. Okay. Let me. Okay. I, I see some agreeing with that. I see a disagree. Interesting. Tell me why you disagree, Paul. Um, so I think it's order of operations, which uh -huh. tells you which of the. Uh, um, Operations you need to do first. Okay. So like, um, even if they, if multiplication went before addition, and um, the five times they would, if they, that would say they, even if the four, if there are four plus two times five. Yeah. What would, it, would it change? In that order, you would still do three times five. Interesting. So you're saying even if I were to do, if, even if this one forward to move on this side, I would yeah. still do three times five first. Yeah. What do you say to that, Mariana? Because you said I, would, I read it from left to right. I agree. Do you, do you agree with him? Okay. Anyone want to speak to that? He's on, he's on to something. Good. He mentioned order of operation. Good. Take. What do you want to ask to that? That, like, kind of when he said that, um, if it, or, um, four plus five times three. Yeah. There's, um, it's basically the same thing, and you. Oh, see. That if, um, if it's four times plus three times five. Yeah. Then, but if if there's um, parentheses, but if there's parentheses. Around where? Around. Four plus three. Mm -hmm. Oh wait. Three times five. Five. Wait. Yeah. Around three times five. Yeah. You would have to read those first, and then plus four. Okay. But like, so you wouldn't be reading left to right. So you're saying that in this case, if I don't have the parentheses which I didn't to begin with, I do have to do it from left to right. But if I have parentheses, I don't have to do it from left to right. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay, how many of you agree with that? I see some disagreeing still. Interesting. All right. Let's see, Tiana, talk to me. Well, um, because I know last year my teacher and my friend and my friend's dad uh -huh. told me that about PEMDAS, parentheses, multiplication, addition, subtraction, uh -huh. and exponents, or I did subtraction, but whatever. It stands for all the operations that we've been learning, yeah. so that you would do it in that order from the P to the S in that order. So if there's parentheses, you do the parentheses first. Awesome. And then Perfect. And this is exactly why I chose to do this because I wanted to see one, if we, one, I love the connection that you made to your fifth grade teacher because we're building on that. We're building on that. And the other thing that I wanted to emphasize was like understanding that even if when we don't follow a certain order or if in math we don't have certain rules about how we do certain things, we can still get different answers and this helps us. So the order of operations really helps us in figuring out how we solve a problem correctly, right? Sophie, you want to answer that? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so I agree with um, Tiana. Okay. But I, I think of it as like a pyramid, uh -huh. where like parentheses would be at the top for an exponent, and then you have like uh, the multiplication and division and addition and subtraction. Mm -hmm. I love that you said that, because that's actually the way that I think about it too. 
and that's why we have it on our notes. So let's go ahead and come back to our notes, and then we can continue to add to this and build that understanding. All right. So I know that you are used to calling it uh, PEMDAS, but I've, I actually adapt it a bit, and I call it GEMDAS. <laughs> and you'll see why I call it GEMDAS. Okay, so this is order of operations, so let's go ahead and define it. So order of operations. is a set of rules used to solve expressions. with multiple operations. ¿Quién me puede traducir esta definición, por favor? ¿Quién me la puede traducir? Give it a shot. Go. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, los reglas para um, que usan para resolver, resolver. resolver las expresiones con con uh, varias operaciones. Very nice, good. Right. Entonces son unas reglas que tenemos en el mundo de matemáticas que usamos para poder manipular las expresiones y, y así resolverlas siguiendo cierto 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 orden de las operaciones. De acuerdo. Entonces, we're going to go ahead and start with GEMDAS. And so one of the things that um, I purposely changed uh, changed the T to a G is because the G stands for Grouping symbols. Okay? And grouping symbols in this case count, I think of grouping symbols in two ways. So I think of parentheses, but I also think of brackets. Okay? So the brackets are the other grouping symbol that also <coughs> come first. So, 